Well, good morning. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. In lieu of uh, this morning's service, I thought I'd bring you a devotional. Uh, something that's just been on my heart. I'm excited to enter into this new year. But I know that this last year has been filled with its own challenges, and coming year will have its own challenges. But in my personal devotion, um, there was a verse that stuck out to me this year that really just kind of captured my heart. And it was out of James 1, 2 through 4, and it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And a couple other translations I like. One was uh, J.B. Phillips says, When all kinds of trials and temptations crowd into your lives, my brothers, don't resent them as intruders, but welcome them as friends. Realize that they've come to test your faith and to produce in you the quality of endurance. But let the process go on until that endurance is fully developed and you will find you'll become a mature character with the right sort of independence. And then one last translation. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So this is something that I was learning and growing in this last few months and one of my devotions, and it just touched my heart. And it made me realize, first of all, how thankful and blessed we are as a church, how, how blessed I am as a pastor, a husband, and a father. And even though I know this last year has had a lot of ups and downs, there is a lot to be thankful for. And I love the one translation where it just says, let yourself grow. Become mature, complete, lack nothing. You will be perfect, needing nothing. And when I, when I thought about that, I thought all of us are coming from different places sometimes. Over the course of the year, some of us are online listening and watching and growing. Some of us have met in person. And there are many situations. And so I just wanted to share from my heart, first of all, gratitude for the love our church has shown, whether you've been online at home and uh, we have loved having you and been praying for you and want to help you. Or you've met in person and we have tried to connect as best we can through these times. But I want you to realize that every one of those situations has created an opportunity to grow. Every, every opportunity has stretched us. So, so if you're online, some of the struggles I know that have been there for the church has been just to stay in touch. Because sometimes we don't know if you're there or not. We don't know if you're watching, if you're involved. Uh, and one of the ways you can stay in touch is just connect through an email. Uh, also connect through serving. I know I've literally had people in our church say, what can I do to serve even though I need to be at home right now? And I just love that heart. It's a heart of service whether, whether you can come or not. Also, find a Zoom group in the coming year. Uh, you know, find a group online that you could Zoom with and connect with. Uh, send us some prayers. Uh, on our webpage, there's a place you could send prayer requests. Uh, also, let us know. If you're, if you're out there and you want to serve, but you don't know how to serve because you're at home, let us, let us know that. Just even email me, kellypatchen at newharborchurch.com. Let us know kind of what your needs are or how you'd like to help, or, or even if I'd like to help, I just don't know what to do. Um, all those things. Because the work that you're going to have to do to stretch and grow in your faith is really going out of your way more than any other time I've known as a pastor, just to stay connected into a body, uh, even though you're at home. Um, but you could do it, because I see it. I see it in people in our church, and I get excited. Also, if you're meeting in person even, it's still challenging. It's been hard during these days to connect with people. Even though they come and you're masked up, the reality is some people don't mind going out to have coffee. Others do. 
Um, you just never know. So I, I know it's been difficult just to connect with people even when you meet in person. So I would really encourage you if you're coming in person this coming year, connect with someone new. We've had a lot of transitions over the last couple of years and we need people showing hospitality the best they can. If you're at home, you can write a letter. If you're uh, at the church, you can um, invite somebody to coffee or something like that outside, safe place. But new people, new people, I just I want to say thank you. For those I have met who've come in person, I get excited because I'm amazed that not only have you started coming, but that you desire to serve and be a part uh, during these crazy times we're in. But for those of you who uh, are online and new, you're still trying to figure that out. And I would just encourage what I just said before, just connect in one of those ways. Let us know you're there. Uh, if you have any needs, just let us know. Stay connected. Just say, hey, I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere. Here's my address. Here's uh, how I can help. Here's whatever. Another way you can give to the church as well. And so you can give online. You can give when you come in person. Uh, we have a kiosk in the lobby. Sometimes giving is a good way to stay connected because I know it's really easy to detach yourself from things. You see, when the trials come, it tests your faith. And so we celebrate at Christmas the good news of great joy, no matter what's thrown at us in the world. So we need to grow in our faith. Don't let anything stop you. I just, I just love the way that that's said when it said, just let yourself grow. This coming year, even though it could be hard, it could be easy, things could free up, things could tighten up, we don't know, but God does. But we do know this, that we can have exceeding joy in this coming year, even now, even in the testing of our faith, even in a ton of trials. Look at the last year. And ask yourself, what, what's been lacking in your faith? If your faith, faith has been tested over this last year, which I can't imagine it hasn't been, grade yourself. If, if the testing of our faith is, a, is literally a test, then grade yourself. How did you do? And then ask yourself, what do I need to improve my grade? How was my faith? Was I spotty? Uh, did I stop watching online? Did I, did I detach from people in general? Not just church, but just people in general? Did you stop connecting and pull away? Are you isolating yourself? Did you stop thinking about, praying for, giving to? Um, there's a lot of ways these things happen. Well, then those are the areas you need to work on your grade. You need to persevere. You need to think of this coming year and think, how can I up my grade? How can I connect and show my faith? And I will tell you this, when you do this, when you sort of set a goal for yourself, in one of these areas, not only do you grow personally in your relationship to God, but you experience incredible joy, even amidst some very, very hard times. In fact, I think God loves it when we give Him our difficulties because they're not difficult to Him. And so, uh, we will be back. We're going to start meeting even next Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, in person and online. So, I hope you can come either way. And if you're new, Welcome. Thanks for coming during this time. And we look forward to getting to know you in any of these ways in the coming year. So until then, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you.